What's going on combat sports fans? Welcome to Five Rounds, the most comprehensive 30 minutes in all of mixed martial arts. I am John Ramdean alongside the one and only Robin Black. In the show today, a bona fide legend weighs in on Anderson Silva. Phil Nurse tells us why the Brazilian is so special. Robin hangs out with the UFC middleweight title challenger, and we take a look at jiu-jitsu in mixed martial arts. But right now, we are less than one week away from the title showdown between Anderson Silva and the undefeated Chris Weidman, a fight that a lot of people are anticipating. Yeah, baby, this is the real thing. This is not fake hype. This is not, oh, let's make a TV show to make you believe that Dan Hardy can knock out GSP. This is a man who can really beat the best fighter of all time, and it's going down in less than a week, and we're pumped. And with that, we are going to take a closer look at the man they call the Spider. Anderson Silva might be the greatest fighter to ever compete in the sport of mixed martial arts. He is revered for his timing, movement, speed, and his overall combat acumen. However, there are a few elements of the Brazilian's game that separates him from almost every other competitor involved in the sport. First of which is his zen-like calmness, a weapon that many pundits feel is the most important and the key to his success. The UFC middleweight king has showcased his poise throughout his fight tenure, a career in which he has been paired with some of the most dangerous men to ever step foot inside of the cage or ring. Followers of the sport got a glimpse of the Team Minotauro's ice-cold demeanor in his second fight for the Zufa-owned promotion, when he dismantled poster boy Rich Franklin to win the coveted middleweight strap. Since then, the Pride veteran would dominate the weight class, for many of his adversaries, Silva would have them beaten even before the first punch or kick was thrown. One of the best examples of Silva's relaxed approach was when he battled arch-rival Chael Sonnen in their first encounter. The 38-year-old was controlled by the American wrestler for the better part of five rounds, until he found his opening and capitalized on the tiniest error made by the former WEC middleweight title challenger. Silva never showed any signs of panic, but allowed himself the necessary time to focus and seize the moment against a man who tried unsuccessfully to play mental warfare. Silva's mental strength inside of the cage is almost unparalleled. It is an attribute that, unlike many aspects of the fighting art, cannot be taught. It is because of his cerebral state that allows for the Muay Thai powerhouse to channel another one of his superior strengths, his creativity. Time and time again, the proud father has displayed an almost video game-like ability to inflict damage on his overmatched opponents. Despite being a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, it is the Spider's stand-up abilities that sets him apart from almost every other fighter in the world. Armed with a vicious clinch game and pinpoint accurate striking, Silva uses his fundamentals to set up a variety of spectacular finishes. Such was the case when he squared off with former Militich fighter Tony Frickland for the Cage Rage promotion. More than happy to oblige the American in the striking department, the future 185-pound champion would end things with an exclamation point, a finish that is still talked about today. Dominance here as champion. Oh, oh back and it's elbow. over. That's it. I it's have over. Reverse elbow. A right back elbow. I have never seen that move yet. And you can see everybody's mouth is open as you look around the arena. That's nobody the move you see in it. movies. Wow. You see that in movies, not in a real fight. Silva would make former champions like Forrest Griffin, Dan Henderson, and Vitor Belfort look like amateurs by showcasing a varied and aggressive attack before earning the stoppage win. Because of his style and his accomplishments, he is certainly going to be considered one of the sport's all-time best, with many feeling he is without question the greatest fighter to ever compete in the game that is constantly evolving. Robin Anderson Silva, really absolutely phenomenal. When you see, you know, the performances he puts forth in the cage, it's really video game-like. Yeah, he's a sorcerer. I mean, he can do things that other humans can't do. Years, I was going to say that years ago, if you saw this guy do this stuff, you would think he was doing voodoo. But st still to this day, when you watch him perform, he does look like he's doing something magic. It really is mind-blowing to watch this man perform. Uh, of course, a lot of people are expecting that Chris Weidman is going to be able to hold him down and do what Chael Sun and couldn't, but all it takes is one flurry from Anderson Silva, one perfectly placed punch, and things could be all over. It's hard to think of a fight you've been more excited about from just a pure sport perspective. You know, never mind hype, never mind stories, never mind any of that kind of stuff. This man is capable, this high level wrestler, this powerfully minded human being is capable of taking the greatest of all time, grinding him onto his back, raining elbows down on him and submitting him. That is incredible. At the same time, this magician can land one of his crazy punches. He can move out to an angle, strike this guy on the chin and put him away. It's just fantastic. Robin, there are many people 
people in the sport that don't appreciate Anderson Silva's demeanor in or outside of the cage. But from a skill standpoint, there's one trainer who's trained multiple UFC champions that marvel at his skill set. He doesn't go out first round to like do damage. He's very analytical. And in that first round, he's breaking you down. He's seeing all of your movements, all of your traits, all of your habits. He's diagnosing a lot. And there's a few times I've watched him fight, and I'm like, he just saw that. He made a mistake, and he just saw that. He's going to capitalize on that in the second round. And then the second round, he's gone in there, and he's done exactly what I saw. I'm thinking, that's interesting. We think very alike. Anderson Silva may dazzle some involved in the sport, but there's one pioneer that feels there should be a new king on the 185-pound throne. Anderson is a guy that rubs many people in the wrong way. He's not a humble guy. He acts, and, and even though he may speak humbly when he talks, when he's in the ring, he doesn't act humbly. He puts down his opponents. He, he acts in a way that, again, we always know what is right, what is wrong. And by looking at that, we know it's wrong. It's like you can beat your opponent, but do it with respect. Respect your opponent. He sweat hard. He worked hard. He gave up so many things to be on that spot. You know, that it's like you can, you can look down at him because you don't know how hard was his fight to be there. So the moment that you stop putting him down, you are passing this. Everybody's seen this. You can hide. That's the beauty of fighting. You can hide who you are. Once you step in there, or they're gonna love you or they're gonna hate you. You're gonna show that you're a brave man or you're gonna show them you're a coward. You can hide. If you're a coward, they will see it. You know, when your opponent is down and out, you're gonna hit him again. When you are, when you are a fair man, you will never do it. You're gonna be great. You're gonna understand the, that your opponent lost and you're gonna respect that. You're not gonna look down on him. You're going to value him for having sweat and blood with you. That's the difference. And Anderson Silva doesn't have this. When he goes in there, he shows he, who he really is. And unfortunately, most people don't like who he really is. Robin, some strong comments made there from the legendary Henzo Gracie. And does he have a point? Does Anderson Silva go out there and try to humiliate his opponents? Man, I don't know. I... I don't know if this is my place to say this. Henzo Gracie has every right to say whatever he wants about a fighter. He's earned that right. And he's saying what he truly believes. He's making that observation as an informed, educated, intelligent pioneer of the sport. He's looking at that at face value and he's saying he's clowning guys. And he has the right and the position within the sport to say that that's wrong. And that's what Henzo is saying. He also said, he told me himself, that uh, Anderson Silva is a guy who snubs fans when they're in line back in Brazil or wherever. People are lined up to get his autograph and to get pictures. There's been times that Anderson Silva has said, no, I'm not giving any more pictures and I'm not giving any autographs. Very different from than a guy like Henzo Gracie yeah. or like Vanderlei Silva. So I can understand why that would rub people the wrong way. Yeah, and that, that's going to rub you the wrong way. And I mean, people, great champions can act however they want. And Anderson Silva is a great champion. But we can respond however we want to as fans. And you know, in every sport, there are the guys who are the greats, who are not good with fans, not good with cameras, not good with the media. It doesn't take away from how special of an athlete they are, but it does change the way we perceive them. And Anderson Silva is one of these guys you're starting to see that Weidman can win this fight. Educated people are looking at it and seeing that. And fans are showing that maybe they would like to see this guy unseated. You know, you're, you're getting that feeling. And I'm one of those guys because I think that Chris Weidman deserves to be a champion. Anderson Silva has had his run. He's a multi-millionaire. He's the biggest the sport has ever seen. And I think you have to give an opportunity like Chris Weidman, who's going to take this opportunity and hopefully be become the new champion in his eyes, and I think he'd be a great ambassador for mixed martial arts. You know, the New York badass is one of the greatest fighters ever, and he broke his leg recently, and he was being asked, Gabe Morenci asked him if he wanted to see Anderson lose, and he said, you know, he's such a great champion, and, he's, and the badass is a man who's going out on a broken leg, and he's saying, I don't want to see this guy go out and lose like this. I want to see him end as a champion and go out that way. So it's another perspective. When we come back to five rounds, Robin hangs out with Chris Weidman, and they talk about one of the most important elements in mixed martial arts. Likes. 
Welcome back to Five Rounds as we are gearing up for UFC 162, which goes down at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. And Robin had a chance to hang out with the 9-0 Chris Weidman ahead of his fight for the world title. Uh, thanks for chatting with me again, Chris. Good to see you again. No problem, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, I, last time that we spoke to you, you were talking about that mental game of dealing with, you know, somebody everybody refers to as the greatest of all time or this elite guy. And, we, and how mentally not being phased by his myth is a big part of winning this fight. Yeah, man, you can't, you can't fight the myth. You got to fight the man. And it's obviously easier said than done. Uh, but it's all about just, you know, working as hard as you possibly can every single day so you can build that confidence in yourself and, and kind of more worry about, you know, what you're going to do in there and not as, as, as much worried about what he's going to do in there. And, and I have that down in every one of my fights. I, never, I didn't give a crap what the guy was going to do. I was going to do my thing, walk forward, punch him in the face, look for my takedowns if they're there. And uh, it's, going to go, it's going to be the same way. And, and how can you, I mean, ensure that when you do go in and you do, the door closes and you touch gloves with him, that it, that it goes the same way? One, obviously, the fact that it's gone that way every way, uh, every time you fought, proves that to you. But how do you, is there anything extra you can do to prepare to make sure you look at him in the eye, it's no big deal? Well, I think just visualizing it over and over again in your mind and making it as real as possible in your mind to where, you know, you hit those gloves a million times and you maintain that confidence even inside your own head because... Um, even, even when you do it in your head, you're going to have doubts and things like that. And it's always about overcoming those doubts. Um, and if you can beat your own mind, uh, you're going to be able to beat him, I think. Uh, at least take the mental side and, and throw it out, you know, make it an even fight. And uh, another thing that's different this time is there could be millions of dollars on the line. You know, your future, you could, uh, from that day forward, be a rich man, remembered forever as a guy who beat this guy, right? Can, how do you pre prevent that from entering your head on that walk to the cage? Uh, I, I just think I'm uh, like a happy-go-lucky guy. I don't, I don't, I'm not very good at multitasking. I'm very focused at one thing. <laughs> so I think it's a blessing in disguise. But, so I'm going to be focused on one thing, and that's Anderson Silva. And, and just going, it's just like another day of sparring, just making sure I try to mentally and physically break my opponent inside the cage. And Anderson Silva is going to be the guy I'm going to be trying to do that too. I think I have the skills. Uh, the skill set and uh, the me mental uh, capabilities to do it, you know. We, we look at uh, Mike Tyson and Buster Douglas, and you know we're near an underdog like he was, but Buster Douglas just didn't buy that Mike Tyson was the Mike Tyson that uh, we were told he was. And this is the same type of thinking, right? Yeah, I mean, um, I see everything that everybody else sees, but I focus on things that make him human, you know, and I almost feel, you know, you don't like to put down people or like um, focus on people's weak points, but to be a fighter and be a confident fighter, you have to. You know, you have to see things that other people aren't really seeing and focus on those because uh, that's what gives you the confidence. You know, if I was to replay his kick against uh, Vitor Belfort every day in my mind, and be like, he's, you know, no one else could do that. He's unbelievable. He's superhuman. Uh, I'd be in some trouble, but I'm not doing that. I see, I see things in this game that are, uh, I can expose and take advantage of, and that's what I'm focused on, on what I can control. You know? uh, Robin, we had a chance to talk to Ray Longo, the coach of Chris Weidman, and he says, there's false confidence and there's real confidence and Chris Weidman has the absolute real kind but at the same time they know the type of dangers that Anderson Silva presents they're going to use that confidence have the best game plan will they be able to do it based on how confident we've seen Chris Weidman and his team well that's only the place to start and I, this has been talked about a lot we've talked about it a ton and this is something we see in the media everywhere this guy's confident people believe he can do it George St. Pierre believes he can do it his coaches believe he can do it that's a great place to start and like he said he's visualized that glove touch he's visualized the walk and all those other things but then a fight begins and really all of this is going to be irrelevant the second the fight starts but but what happens are at least you put yourself in a position to be able to win this fight you've been in the position before you've been backstage getting ready to get inside of a cage or a ring to face off against another guy you have it in your mind how things are gonna go but a punch lands does it change everything yeah but you can't compare us normal people to these elite athletes I'm a great analyst I'm not a great fighter <laughs> I'm not mentally strong like these guys these are superhumans these guys are special human beings when we watch them from the couch we can't understand that all of us can't you know process this we're not all capable of it is this the guy that's capable of it. Well, everyone seems to believe he is, and he's doing the right things. BJ Penn used to, before a fight, he would reenact the entire thing right down to people in his gym booing.
booing him, booing him, hearing the other corner put him down, you know, the water, the ice, the timing, a, a, a referee, a timekeeper, everything. He would create it all so when he got in there, he could perform. And that's what Weidman's doing. But all of this is fascinating to people like us. But the fight starts when the fight starts. And also, y'all, we also have to remember it. Everything changes once a punch lands. And Anderson Silva, better at that than 99.9% .9 of the fighters out there. Uh, game plan has to go out the window. That's what we've heard. A punch changes everything. And has Chris Weidman done, taken the proper steps to ensure that he can get hit by Anderson Silva? We know that he brought in Steve Thompson. But as you mentioned, Stephen Thompson is a talent in his own right, but he's simply not Anderson yeah, Silva. Yeah, he's no Anderson Silva. The one interesting thing about this type of skill set combined with this type of thoroughbred mentality is that when you get cracked in the head, you revert back to your brutes. You re revert back to what you're good at. And in this guy's case, the thing he reverts back to is a lifetime of wrestling, which will put him into a safe area. This fight's fantastic, man. This is the real deal. I cannot wait for it. And of course, if Chris Weidman does get hit and the fight goes down to the ground, we will be able to see his combination of wrestling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. And when we come back to five rounds, we'll take a look at some of the best jiu-jitsu players in mixed martial arts. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Five Rounds. We all know that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is one key element that comprises mixed martial arts. We go back to the very first UFC, we saw Hoist Gracie kind of let the masses know, let the world know the strength of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But Robin, right now in 2013, where does the gentle art stand in terms of your mixed martial arts arsenal? Yeah, suddenly it's becoming you know one of the very, very most important things again. And after that, that um, Hoist Gracie era, you know, we saw the wrestlers pop up and the wrestlers were able to kind of uh, change the deck a little bit. Everybody had to keep up with the wrestling and then guys striking became better and they had to keep up. But we're once again at a place where almost everything is equal again. So the guy with the better jujitsu will have a big advantage. Well, we have to know who is the best jujitsu fighter competing in mixed martial arts. Well, I'll give you my top 10 right now. And we take a look at some of the best guys in the sport right now and there are no surprises that BJ Penn would be on that list. The first American to win at the black belt level at the Mundials, a brown belt, black belt. Also on the list we see uh, Bibiano Fernandez, one of the best featherweights in the world. The recently signed Robert Drysdale comes in at number 10. Uh, two of the most impressive guys on the list have to be Jacare Souza and Damian Maya. Fabrizio Verdum comes in at number two. Just simply phenomenal for a big man the way he moves. But at the number one spot, I think there are no surprises there. The man with the last name, Gracie, Roger Gracie, the best to ever compete in the sport of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And joining me right now, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt himself, Ricardo Amendolia. And what makes Roger so special? Uh, his, his performances, his technique, it's his ability to just take world-class competitors and make them look like beginners. I mean, we're talking about a guy that at the World Championships would finish people one year with mount chokes, like just choke from mount and have the whole crowd counting down the seconds before he finishes the match. Then the next year goes back and finishes everyone with just with collar chokes from the back. So he's just able to neutralize everyone's attacks and just shut them down completely and just do whatever he wants to them in the jiu-jitsu realm. Yeah, I mean, Roger Grace, he's just a phenomenal athlete in the world of jiu-jitsu, hopefully to make that transition a very successful one here in mixed martial arts. But when you look at the landscape of MMA and Jiu Jitsu, we've seen guys like Jacare, Roger, Fabrizio Verdum, Damian Maya all become world champions in Jiu Jitsu. And we've seen a successful transition, whether it be Fabrizio Verdum and his Thai boxing skills, working with Rafael Cordero, Damian Maya and his wrestling abilities. Do we expect those same things from Roger Gracie, considering these guys all knew what it, be was to, what it took to become a champion in Jiu Jitsu? Will they be able to do it in mixed martial arts, especially from a, say, Roger Gracie standpoint? 
I mean, for Roger Gracie, I think so. He's a very, very intelligent fighter. He's got one of the best teams uh, backing him. He's obviously being influenced by Henzo, who's bringing in the top Thai boxing coaches, wrestlers. He's got an arsenal of people to train with. He's also trains on occasion with GSP. So he's getting really, really good advice, and he's not rushing his career too fast. I mean, he's in, he was in strike force, had a lot of fights, now he's in the UFC, but I really think he's not jumping into this unless he feels really, really prepared. So I think the sky's the limit for him for sure. I, I think it's interesting when you watch that developmental period in MMA, and I think Damian Maya is kind of the prototype of it. He came over with the, you know, the world's best jujitsu game, and then he added the other things. And to do that, he almost had to move backwards as an MMA competitor for a bit. Once he kind of mastered these other areas and built up his game, then he reapplied his game as a jujitsu specialist again with everything. So, you know, there is that developmental period for sure between being world champion jujitsu guy and uh, world champion level MMA guy. It's just like Jack Ray's recent fight. If you watch that, I mean, Jack Ray went through a period where, I mean, his first fight, he took on two weeks notice with two weeks boxing. The guy's a machine. He went out there and he's had a career of ups and downs, submitting guys, but then fighting Gegard Mousasi, getting knocked out. And then he fights, fights in strike force, same thing. It's up and down, up and down. His last fight, he felt so comfortable in his jiu-jitsu once again. He just destroyed beautiful. his opponent. Beautiful, beautiful yeah. match. Uh, Jacques Ray, I think, is one of the guys to look out for. Just his improvements over the last number of years, simply phenomenal. Quickly, we have to go. We talk, have to talk about how Jiu-Jitsu is going to impact the main event. Anderson Silva versus Chris Weidman. We know that Anderson Silva has brought in Andre Galvao for his preparations. Chris Weidman battled Galvao at ADCC back in 2009. Going to be a very different Chris Weidman. What are you anticipating uh, from Weidman's Jiu-Jitsu game? I mean, I think Weidman, once again, he's got one of the best coaches in his corner, Henzo Gracie, long, you know, same as Hodger. And I think that he's going to be able to take Anderson down. I think that's going to be the goal. He has to be able to take him down, smash him, and repeatedly try to do that, try to pass the guard, get to a position where he can submit. Anderson, I don't think he's going to be going for a lot of submissions. I kind of suspect him more so really, really looking to defend the positions, trying to defend the arm coming across to the side to get the side control or passing the guard getting back to his feet and finishing you know, in his favorite realm, which is striking. Will Chris Weidman be able to pull it out? Well, we'll find out the answers on Saturday night. For Ricardo Amendolia, Robin Black, our entire Fight Network crew, I'm John Ramdean saying thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Five Rounds.